Think of the new economic environment created by the federal constitution, by Hamilton's new financial architecture, and by the possibilities of the United States, which is on the eastern coast of a vast continent full of resources. Think of that, and then think of an analogy. Um, maybe one that, certainly one that comes to mind for me, uh, is a sort of a terrarium in which the organisms that live there have all the resources they need. It's warm, there's water, there's food, or maybe another analogy. Think about a planet that's exactly the right distance from the sun. It's in exactly the best temperature zone. And this is what the United States was in the 1790s if you were an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs you might also think of as the organisms that populate that ecology that is created within the economy. But think about what happens when one organism is too successful in a particular environment. Eventually, it consumes all of the resources that it itself needs to live on. Eventually, it destabilizes the environment. And this is possibly what could happen if entrepreneurial desires ran unchecked and unregulated. And when we look at some of the other things that were happening in the 1790s economy, we can see that that was also a continual risk. So I've been throwing this word entrepreneur around a little bit. And in fact, you've probably heard it thrown around quite a bit. So let's, let's pause for a second and see if we can define what that means. And I think the best definition comes from a great Austrian economist named Joseph Schumpeter. Now Schumpeter was a fascinating and colorful figure. In his own way, he was a lot like Alexander Hamilton, except that when he was given control of an entire economy to run, the result was disaster in the wake of World War I when he was the Secretary of the Treasury for Austria. But what was so unique about Schumpeter was his emphasis not on the division of labor or the exploitation of the working class or the beauties of an unregulated economy. What he focused on when he tried to explain why capitalism had been successful, and it was obviously very successful by the early 20th century, why it was so successful as an economic system, well, Schumpeter said that went back to the role of the entrepreneur in the capitalist economy. An entrepreneur for Schumpeter was simply an economic actor who was able and willing to practice what he called creative destruction the ability to rearrange the relationships between producer and consumer, between resources and consumers, between the state and the market, in the ways that best suited him, the ways that allowed him to create new markets or rearrange old markets if necessary, to cut out old producers who were doing things in inefficient ways. Creation of new economic relationships, destruction of old ones. And this is only possible when you remove as many of the old rules, the old feudal and other rules that govern the medieval economy as possible. And what we can see when we look at the United States in the late 17th century is that this was becoming possible. Yes, Hamilton had established an environment where regulation was happening. But there were also many new opportunities that hadn't been regulated and perhaps could not be regulated. All right, so let me give you a concrete example of the ways in which entrepreneurial desires running unchecked, maybe even aided and abetted by government figures, could create chaos. 